Hey, it's Ozzy here, continuing with the XMind 8 tutorials video series, and this is the last module. In this module, I'm going to go over some example tutorials, which I mentioned in the Mind Mapping Uses module. Okay, so this is just to solidify and show you real examples of how those different scenarios are used. Okay, so I'm going to expand that out, and you'll see that our first item is organize your day or week. Now, there's quite a few examples here, and rather than build each one from scratch and turn this into a two hour long video, what I've done is I've selected existing templates that I can work with, or in some cases, just present in full. So I'm gonna to go to the weekly plan template, and you can see here, this looks really nice. Somebody has actually spent some time prettifying this, and you can see that what they've done here is they've added each day of the week as the main topics. Then you have all these subtopics and some sub subtopics. The thing to note here is that this is using a logic chart structure, right aligned, just like I like. And you can see that this structure is ideal for this kind of mind map. Okay, so if you were going to create a weekly plan for yourself, you could use this template and modify it for yourself. Okay, so let's go back to our modules and see what's next. Plan your book. So I'm gonna to go to the book report and here you can see the book report template which will give you a good base to start with. And you can see that this is the big picture of the book. Here you have the main character, which actually should be main characters. And you can see here a list of characters. You have the plot analysis. Okay, you have a conclusion, you have a summary, which is a notepad. You also have a favorite part, which is also a notepad. I'm not sure. <laughs> the favorite part is supposed to be down to each reader, not the author, but there you go. Okay, so the way I use XMind when it comes to my own books is actually just to mind map the actual chapters. Right? I wouldn't have that, I certainly wouldn't have a favorite part or a summary. In fact, if I just highlight all this and delete everything, this is normally what I would do. I would have something called the plot. And if I was brainstorming this from the beginning, if I just had the seed of an idea, I would start typing in the different individual pieces that are going to make up this plot. Okay. And this is part of the brainstorming phase. So at this point, I don't care about the order. I'm just writing as I think. Then once that's done, I would start mapping out the chapters. Okay, so let's do these here. And I wouldn't use the map structure as this example has. I would actually change that to a logic chart. Okay, now here is where I would take bits of plot, if you like, and start grouping them into chapters like this. Uh, like so just click drag and drop and from there I would start expanding on each chapter like so and eventually I end up with an overview of all my chapters and then just get to work okay so let's go back to the modules and go to project management now this is the project dashboard template and you can see in this example that there are three projects assigned to different people and each project has different objectives. And you can still use your branches here or your topics. In this case, they are being used in the actions column. And of course, as these actions are completed, you can mark them using the markers or if they're in progress, you can use the markers to very quickly help you see what everybody is up to. Okay, so let's go to the next example, which is mapping out your business. Now I've chosen the company hierarchy template, and you can see that this is using the organizational structure, but it's also using other structures within the topics. So it's combining different structures and you can see how effective this is. So from the top, this is the organizational structure, but then these main topics here, are set to the tree structure. And that really maximizes the screen space. 
but also makes this look really, really nice. Okay, so let's go back to our modules and the next one is mapping out your idea. So I have chosen the business plan template because this is a perfect example of how I map business ideas. Now this doesn't have to be a business plan per se, it can be any type of plan, but the important thing to note here is that this is using the map structure. And you can see here that relationships are being used. You can see here as well that the borders have been thickened. You can see here a great example of a boundary. And again, that boundary has been styled, so it's really visible. There's great use of icons here. And you see something here that we haven't actually covered in the examples, which is a summary. So let me just show you what one of those is. Let me just select these three subtopics. I'm going to right click on that and select summary. And what that does is it creates this branch and you can obviously rename that to whatever. I could call that branding. Okay, so that's what a summary is. And there is one extra thing that we haven't covered in the tutorials, which is this. And this is a floating topic. It's like the main topic, but it's not actually attached to anything. Okay, so let me delete this one and create a new one. So the way you do this is you right click anywhere on the screen, anywhere that's clear where there isn't a topic or a subtopic and you select floating topic. Then you can move your cursor around and then click anywhere on the screen where you want to place that floating topic. And then from there, you just do the usual, you hit tab and enter to build out that topic. Okay. So that is mapping out an idea. Let's go back to our modules shopping list. Okay, so let's do a shopping list here. Now, I don't actually use Xmind to do shopping lists, but you know, if you find it useful for that, then go for it. One situation that I can think of where it would come in handy is if you're preparing a personal plan for you, like a diet plan, and you could do a little bit of brainstorming and come up with all the foods that you want to eat on this plan and then categorize them. So that's something where mind mapping would come in really handy. It beats writing all the foods in a list or on a notepad because once you type out those foods, when you start categorizing them, the nice thing is that you can click and drag things and move them to different nodes. And you can't do that with a list. Okay, so let's go back to our modules. And the next one is workflows. Okay, so here is the example workflow template. And you can see here that this is a flow chart and it describes a process. It goes from the start to this node, which is received data, then verified data. And here you have a rhomboid, which is a decision point. So this way for yes and this way for no. Now I will say one thing, and that is that Xmind is not the best software for creating workflows. You can see that these are actually relationships. So actually creating this workflow is actually quite tedious. If you're creating a very simple process or a series of very simple processes and you need to come up with a report for the client or something, then you could certainly use this template, export it as an image, import it into a report and you're done. But when it comes to building bigger processes, mind mapping software and flow charting software are two different things. And I can see what Xmind is trying to do here. They're trying to show how versatile the tool is, and it is, but it's not the ideal tool for creating flowcharts. But if you don't have another tool to create flowcharts and you need something quick and small, then you can certainly use this. Okay, let's head on over to our modules. The next one is teaching, selling, and presenting. Now, there are no templates for this, but as I pointed out in the examples module, these three things are very closely related. And you've actually seen this approach throughout this entire tutorial series. I'm teaching and presenting at the same time. It's really the same thing. And all the same rules apply if you're selling to a client. You're simply displaying information in a very visual way. Okay, creating reports. You also saw me do that in the tips and tricks module where I exported my mind map to a JPEG and then I used a word editor. In this case, I used Google Docs. I imported that image and then I exported the entire document as a PDF. Okay, and finally, the last item is brainstorm like a pro. And by this point, you know exactly how to do that. But just to recap on what I do, I simply open up a new mind map. So in this case, I press Control and N for new. 
I always choose the logic chart to start with. I select the default one. And from this point, I hit tab and I then name my first topic. And usually from there, I start to branch out like this. Okay, I'm hitting enter, typing, then enter again. Then I'll use the navigation keys, hit enter again, name my second topic and continue like this. So this enables me to get my ideas down very, very quickly. And then when it comes to developing the idea, I can simply click and drag things, add things, remove things and do all that cool stuff. And to show you one example of a complete brainstorming session, let's go back to our modules. Let me close that out. And there you go. This started out as a brainstorming session. I knew I wanted to put together a tutorial series on how to use XMind 8. And the first thing I did was to create the main topics. Now, not all the original things that I came up with made it to the final product. And some of them I renamed. So for example, this mind mapping users, this is something that I had to sit down and think about in order to come up with all these examples. And I did the same for the structures here and for the tips and tricks and the tutorials. I also did a little bit of brainstorming, just coming up with the things that I could show you that I thought would be of value. Okay. You now have ninja level skills when it comes to using X mind eight. I've really enjoyed putting this training together for you and I hope you've enjoyed it and got loads out of it. So if I may ask, please leave me a comment and maybe even a like if you got something out of this training. Thank you for sticking with me and please subscribe to the channel so that I can keep on making trainings like this. Take it easy, stay cool and check out the channel.